You are listening to episode 66. And I also would like to introduce today the Okiki Video Bootcamp. Yes, I will be launching a course, which I will have a wait list in the show notes. And I will be launching some group coaching as well. I know there has been a lot of requests lately of people wanting to learn how can they create content for their own brands. And so I'm looking forward to bringing you along in the journey with that. If that's something that you've wanted to gain skills and techniques on, this will be for you. You'll learn systems on how to create content effectively and efficiently and have more time for yourself in the process while reaching your clients. Again, you can find the information for the Okiki Video Bootcamp in the show notes below. On today's episode, I get to interview someone who I've just gotten to know recently and just really enjoyed hearing about her story, her passion, and her heart. And her name is Joelle Dunbar. She was born and raised in the Philippines and went to school in Alberta and is currently in Saskatoon, where she is also a mom, wife, entrepreneur, and designer. And she is the woman behind the brand, the Free Spirits Apparel and Fiber Company, where they design and create contemporary knitted apparel. She's really into this philosophy of quality over quantity and really wants to work towards materials and using a zero waste policy and really working towards slow fashion and also fashion that empowers individuals in other countries as well and other developing countries. So really, she's already on a mission starting something very amazing amazing and noble and I'm really excited to share the episode and this new friend that I've made with you all on the podcast today. Also, if you have been enjoying the Okiki podcast, be sure to leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts and thank you so much to everyone who already has. You can also follow us on Spotify and be sure to leave me a comment and let me know how have these episodes been impacting you. All right, without further ado, on with the episode. Welcome to the Okiki Podcast, where we make inspirational people known. Brought to you by your host, Fian O'Brien. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Okiki Podcast. And today I'm really excited to have a special guest. Her name is Joelle Dunbar, and she owns the Free Spirit and Co. Company. So um, I'm really excited to have her on the show today because it's actually someone I know uh, from Yoga Dolls to Church, but I'm also pumped to see what she's been working on. And it's already been growing fast, I hear, and mm-hmm. to share that with everyone on the podcast. So thank you, Joelle, for being on the You're podcast welcome. today. So nice to be in your podcast. It's such a privilege for me. I don't usually do these things, but I'm very excited. I'm so happy. Mm -hmm. So, Joelle, as you get into it, what inspired you to start this business? What inspired you to become an entrepreneur, especially in this season? Actually, knitting was a hobby I picked up during uh, when it just started, um, COVID started. I think that was two years ago. And I was pregnant and I knew my plans were to stay home and be with my kids and see them grow up. So I can't just be cleaning my house all day. So um, I knew that I'm always a busy woman. I don't like sitting around and I like doing something new, learning something new. So I was inspired actually from my husband's cousin. She is an amazing knitter. She makes really good clothes. And I was like, and I have been, um, my dream was to be actually a fashion designer. And I was like, you know what? 
this is something new that I want to try making clothes out of like strings. And that really inspired me. I love details. So when you're knitting, you need to be um, very, very meticulous when it comes to little details, especially the, the stitches that you make. So knitting was such a fun hobby for me and started with the first project and the second project and lots of projects after. Me and my husband started brainstorming about what, you know, what you can do more about this knitting that you've been doing and you've always wanted to be a designer. And I've been always telling him about designing clothes. He's like, why don't you make or design a pattern for your um, own sweater? And yeah, it all started with just feeling like I need to do something. That's amazing. And also hearing that there was something in you already towards fashion. That's really cool. I know in our city, we have like a kind of neat, at least definitely before the pandemic, we would do these like local fashion shows with the Saskatoon Fashion and Design Festival. And I remember (laughs) volunteering for that. So I was always excited to see up and coming designers in our own city, you know, and a lot of them our age actually coming up with their own work and actually having a platform to showcase that in. So Mm -hmm. that's really cool. And also finding purpose, even though you're a mom, to also find something that is for you as well. In all of that, what was the biggest obstacle to launching this and how did you overcome it? Well, my biggest obstacle was my self-insecurity. There was like a lot of like, I'm not good enough. I am not skilled enough or talented enough. Or like, I don't have like any experience with like doing business or any knowledge about running a business. So um, that was, there was a lot of it, just a lot of overthinking. But in all of that, I think the biggest um, and how I overcame that um, self insecurity that I had was trusting growth and giving a lot of grace to myself that there was all, there will always be room for learning and growing. And yeah, I think that's how it really works for me. And still, I don't think I am in the very top, but I really love where I am right now. And I love what I'm doing for a living. And also just watching my kid grow is such a blessing to me. Yeah, I love so much of what you said. And that's definitely value that our audience can get, especially is just to keep focusing on the growth, of course. Yes. Of course, you're not where you want to be today, but mm-hmm. you can only get there if you keep moving. For yeah, sure. There, there will always be like stuff that like, oh, why, uh, why am I not making something? Like if I see someone, oh, well, she does really better than me. Like, you know, she's like right up there and I'm just right up here. Like, why am I not there yet? Like I'm doing all the same things. There's just a lot of comparison and yeah, just very, very insecure of myself, but giving a lot of grace and knowing that you will always grow and there will be always improvement is the big key things to like achieving what you want. Definitely. Yeah. I do think that's a valuable lesson. And I I know you and other entrepreneurs have gone through phases of, you know, like, Am I qualified to be here? Should I even be here? Should yeah. I be showing up? And it's like, if you have it, if you have the desire and passion, why not? You know? Mm-hmm. And so I'm very excited that you're stepping into that. And also going to that question, what initiatives did you take then to create your own brand? Because I know before there was kind of thoughts of like, there's so many of these other brands out here. So when you really, you know, dug your heels in a, and you went, okay, I'm going to actually do this. What was the initiative you took then to let the world know? And where did you choose to show up to let them see what you were about? Learning about knitting, there is such a lot of things that are just in tied to it. Free Spirits was born just because of the love of environmental um, aspects, how you can uh, make your own yarn from, it's like an idea from farm to table, but farm to garments so you can make your own yarn from whatever um from sheep or an alpaca or even flax fibers or cotton and you can make it a sweater and i really love that idea that um we don't have to use any like harmful materials that could harm our environment i am all about that and um Knitting supports a lot of movements, like I've heard of like slow fashion, ethical fashion, and like conscious fashion and all that stuff. So I really am into that kind of fashion nowadays. 
definitely not into fast fashion. I believe that um, all those people that design their clothes all the way from Bangladesh or India or China deserve better than what they could add because I am designing clothes myself and I am charging this much. However, they don't get paid enough. And I feel like they could have more and deserve better. So Free Spirit started to be um, the love for environmental aspects as well. And and I Free Spirits also wants to build community and awareness that not only I can make my own clothes and make clothes for everybody, but also everyone can do it at the same time. Yeah. That's very cool. So you're not just creating fashion. You're also trying to have an avenue for education as well, it sounds like. To educate about slow fashion, to educate about what's happening in the industry. And then also to empower people, it sounds like, too, in their own creation. So in light of that, I have a couple of questions, but kind of going back to the branding question. So where where do you show up the most for people to really see where Free Spirit is about? When you started really putting yourself out there, was it like word of mouth? Was it social media? How, how was that journey for you in, in letting people know about what you had to offer? Well, it all started with my, my husband actually is a barber and you probably have known. We, he just started saying, oh, my wife, you know what? Everybody, every guy goes to his chairs. How's your life? How's your wife is doing? So he always tells, oh, my wife is starting to do this little business. And yeah, it's a lot of word of mouth, actually. Awesome. So <laughs> shout out to <laughs> for, for, for helping out. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. And uh, yeah. you also have a presence on Instagram. When, when did that start up for you as well? Um, it all started, I think, um, February. And um, I wanted to have a separate page. It started with just, I wanted to have a separate page for just my knitting. I wanted to do a blog, but obviously we started brainstorming ideas of like, what if we make this an online shop? Because it all started with like making one sweater. And I'm just like, this sweater is made of 100% wool. And I can like, I was like, wow, this is very amazing. And I was like, I feel like you could share with everybody. So my husband was like, why don't you all open an online store and we'll make it happen. So it all started with that one. Yeah, and uh, it's great hearing about both of you because I believe there's some entrepreneurial dynamics going on <laughs> there. Uh, very, very fun to, to hear about the collaboration there. And you also mentioned the education piece of your brand. So do you teach people how to knit and sew as well? Well, um, I am working on trying to do an educational platform, but definitely a little bit, a few more years from here, I have to be honest. I just have a lot of like things that I have to do, especially building foundations for my business. And I just have a lot to learn about business first, and then I can start teaching. But I really want to teach people on how to be, they can design their own clothes, make their own clothes. For some people like me growing up, um, I was one of those different kids that likes to draw and sketch um, little fashion figures. And um, some people find it weird. And I have this, little buddy of mine that he wants to be a fashion designer too so we kind of get along and we were those one of those weird kids and um, in school we wanted to have fashion design classes but some of our teachers kind of disregarded that and um, I want to be one of those examples that or an inspiration that they can start their own passion and um, work from there. Yeah, and I think it's such good timing too, because definitely with everyone, well, hopefully we won't be home forever, but with people being home before and online learning, definitely um, that's where a lot of things are going. I'm sure there could be some serious community built around that. Also wanted to ask you about, yeah, so you're talking about how that's like a big dream in the future. But within the year you launched this brand, then you have your Instagram. Um, I remember in just one-to-one discussions, you mentioned there was a lot of growth that happened. So I guess I wanted to ask for the audience, what was the biggest surprise for you when you did launch this brand in terms of how it's done this past year? Well, the biggest surprise for me was there was a lot of people actually like the stuff that I'm making. All this time, I believe that knitting or knitted pieces is such an acquired taste. 
And um, while well, we live in Canada, we all want something cozy and something warm. So it kind of makes sense, actually. I, I, for some reason, I thought that it's, it is just such a grandma thing. That's how it is known. But with us, with just a few styles, a few um, right color choices, will definitely make it contemporary. And a lot of people dig it. So um, it all started with just a few people like uh, on my friend circle trying to and then try to help me out and they always post it and they always mention um, the stuff that I, I sell. And I also just a lot of hard work on marketing, marketing it through like Facebook mar- marketplace, um, using a lot of uh, Google tools like the ads and all that stuff. Yeah, so in terms of like your goals for how you thought it would go based on even what you thought knitting uh <laughs> Would you say you outdid your goals in terms of how you hoped it would yeah, sell and how you'd hoped the reception would be? And so I guess along those lines, yeah, where do you see, uh, what are some of your goals for your business now within this year and then maybe five years from now, if you're to give people a vision of where you see this brand going, especially with your mission behind it? Well, most likely, I actually kind of like, I used to do that a lot. I have lots of set goal. They always have something planned. But nowadays, I've been just trying to do like, what I'm going to do next month? What am I going to do this month? It's because of what we have nowadays with all the pandemic situation. There is a lot of hassle and there's a lot of slowing down. So what I've been doing is just taking a one step at a time. But if you are asking me about my goals and I am hoping to, since I've hired a new assistant and that has been a very glorious moment for me to just focus on my artistic sides and not the business side, which is nice. I'm hoping to, in the next year, probably hire a couple people. But Also, we're going to add in some good platforms about helping uh, women from my countries that doesn't have jobs. Um, We're probably going to do some training and giving them a business license so we can just do contracts. And it's kind of starting a platform that we're helping women uh, or moms at home that doesn't have jobs or something like that in the Philippines normally. Um, We also, if I start doing that, I also want to plan on like, since the business is running itself, yes, I will start educating people and probably that kind of direction and go successful. Why not following a big industry of making our own fabrics as well? That will be the biggest part. (laughs) The biggest success is making our own fabrics and having like, farming um, our own sheep or alpacas and just making our own yarn yarn to a garment kind of idea that's so cool and, and it's cool to see this vision of how you want to create a business that ultimately creates impact in, yeah. in a lot of different directions that's really awesome to hear and definitely rooting to see I also wanted to touch on even kind of this renewed sense of like you said, interest in knitting. Um, Mm -hmm. Previously, it was seen as something of the older generation, but you're noticing that there is kind of like this rebirth happening with it. So I was just wondering if you could elaborate on that and some of the ways you're seeing it now, even in modern times being used. (laughs) Well, a lot of it goes from designing. Well, there could be still like um, designs that would still be like, a very old style that normally when it comes to fashion, something always comes back. Nowadays, everything from the 60s or 70s are still in. And that's kind of thing. Um, I think it's just the picking the right colors and the right designs that make it like, if you see something like, oh, this gear, it's all bohemian style. So what is the bohemian palette? Like, what can I do to make it like, look like what is on trend but also what you like and what's comfortable you know so I think just taking it a step further with um, designing and choosing the right colors and um, also the big for knitting is just the comfort that you bring for the clothes that you have is such a huge thing nowadays so yeah I think it's just a a little bit of like makeover or a little touch up can do something different and still be on style. Definitely, for sure. 
And my final question for you is what do you value the most about the position you're in today with your business? Well, what it things that, that I value, the one thing I value is what difference I can make. Well, it doesn't have to be a big, big thing. Um, I don't usually wish for the biggest thing because normally I feel like I'm this small and the whole, whole world is such a big, big, big. Um, anyways, I usually would start something small. So usually at home, um, I want to be a mom and I want to be a great example for my daughters or for my future kids, especially showing them hard work and that if you show them that uh, you could, if you're doing a lot of hard work, you, they will get them what they want. And also like having passion for your dreams, that if you put your heart into it, you'll get the satisfaction for the outcome and it will be more priceless that you would imagine. I also want to make a difference in just like my community, what surrounds me. And especially here in Saskatchewan, I want to try supporting local so supporting local farmers, like I said, from farm to garments, we want to support them. And hopefully we're going to buy a lot of like um, yarn products or fiber products from local farmers. So we kind of give them jobs as well. And um, lastly, like I said, more of a awareness to end building a community. I, as a small business owner and also a designer, I learned that fashion industry shouldn't be a competition. Like nowadays, it's just a more competition. And when it comes to like, oh, we should sell selling more. And but in the end, selling more can also result to unpaid workers, underpaid workers, mistreated workers all the way from third countries. And I feel like they deserve better. And I believe that if we can be a community, not just to help our environment, but to help other people in other countries, especially like fast fashion workers, that they deserve better. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us, Joelle, and really giving some context to your values behind your brand as well. I wanted to give a chance for you to let the audience know uh, where can they find you and where can they shop from you uh, if they want to check out your brand. You can definitely check out my website. It's uh, freespiritsandco.com. You can also visit my page and see what's what's up with my daily life on my Instagram, the Free Spirits and Co. Yeah, get in touch with me. We can all be friends. I do like having new friends all the time. And yeah. That sounds great. Well, thank you so much, Joelle. Thank you for sharing about your story, your brand, your heart behind the vision. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, just really appreciate you being on the podcast today. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, this is such a blessing. And I hope you'll find something from my story.